Since we didn't get to go over this in detail in class, I wanted to give you um, an alternate method to do problem 4.2 from the book. So the book does this multi-degree of freedom system using Lagrange's approach, but I wanted to point out just how easy it is using a systematic algorithm for Newton's method to do a force balance on each one of our degrees of freedom and arrive at the same equations of motion. So starting with our first degree of freedom, Q1, we can write for Q1, all the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times acceleration of Q1. In other words, mass 1, which is the mass of Q1, times Q1 double dot is equal to all of the forces that act on this mass. First, sticking with our sign convention where F is in the same direction as Q1, this will be on the right hand side of our mass times acceleration equals force equation F1 positive and then every other internal force so spring forces damping forces anything that is not explicitly externally applied force F will in this setup just be treated as a restorative or a resistive force so we automatically know to put a negative sign in front of all of these forces. First, let's look at K1. So we have the spring force, K1, uh, sorry, the spring force, which is K1 times the total stretching of the spring, which depends on Q1 and Q3. That's where they're attached. So Q1 comes first because we are dealing with our first equation of uh, our first degree of freedom here. We just always write Q1 first and then subtract everything else from that. So Q1 minus Q3 in that case. Similarly for the damper C, we have minus C times Q1. Remember this is a velocity. Damping forces are velocity dependent. Q1 dot minus Q2 dot. And then we have no other directly attached components to our first degree of freedom Q1. We have the external force, we have the spring force, and we have the damping force taken care of. No other attachments are present at M1. We can rearrange this, bring all of our internal forces to the left hand side of the equation. M1, Q1 double dot, now plus C, Q1 dot, minus Q2 dot, so the signs work out in this method, plus K1, Q1 minus Q3 is equal to F, right? So all of our signs work out. This is the correct equation of motion for our first degree of freedom. Similarly, for the second degree of freedom, some of the forces is equal to mass 2 times Q2 double dot, which is equal to F2. Now we have a damper here, so minus C times Q2 dot minus Q1 dot, and then a spring there minus K2 times Q2 minus its connecting Q3. Bring that over to the other side, M2, Q2 double dot, plus C times Q2 dot minus Q1 dot plus K2 times Q2 minus Q3 is equal to F2. And so on and so forth for our third equation of motion. Some of the forces on mass 3 is M3 Q3 double dot, which is equal to F3. Again, positive force, everything else resists that. So K1, K2, and K3 are all resistive forces. So K1, we always write our degree of freedom of interest first and then subtract everything from that. K2 times Q3 minus Q2. And finally K3, which would be Q3 minus zero because our ground is zero so we can just leave it as Q3. 
rearrange this and we wind up with M3, Q3, double dot, plus K1 times Q3 minus Q2 plus K2 times Q3 minus, uh, sorry, Q3 minus Q1 is the spring connecting Q3 and Q1. K2 connects Q3 and Q2, and K3 connects Q3 and the ground. And so these are our three equations of motion. Now, if you just want to cut to the end and write everything in matrix form, then we can do a, sort of a shortcut, right? So let's say we have our mass matrix which is multiplied by all of our accelerations, all of our Q dot terms, and we want to know what goes in the matrix entries. Mass matrix is easy. It's going to be everything from our first equation on the first row, so the only mass we have multiplied times Q1 is M1, everything else is zero. Second equation of motion, M2 is the only thing that appears times Q2 and then M3 from the third equation. Where it gets interesting is, let's say we want to look at our damping ratio, which is Q1 dot, Q2 dot, and Q3 dot. So our damping uh, parameter, sorry, not damping ratio. So C, our damping matrix. From our first equation, we see we have one positive C and one negative C. In other words, the thing that's multiplied times Q1 is C, and the thing that's multiplied times Q2 is minus C, right? So Q1 times C, Q1 times minus C. We don't have any C's times a Q3, so this entry, the third entry, will be blank. From our second equation of motion, we see clearly we have a positive C times Q2, and we have a negative C times Q1, which means we have a negative C in this element, which, by the way, fits our expectation that we should have mirror images across the diagonal term. So if we have minus C here, we'll have minus C there. Now, continuing on, we have no more C terms in this, so all of these third row, third column entries are blank because we have no damping from the motion of mass 3. What is most interesting, though, is our stiffness matrix, which we can do really quickly and slightly differently by considering this question. How many springs, Ks, do we have acting on this degree of freedom, Q1? Well, we have one. K1. So K1 acts on Q1. And moving along to our second row, how many springs act on the second degree of freedom? Well, K2. So we have K2 there. Now let's look at the third mass. How many springs act on the third mass? We have K1 acting on the third mass, K2 acting on the third mass, and K3. So K1 plus K2 plus K3. And then, what about the off-diagonal terms? Well, the off-diagonal terms are easy, because what we need now is which of these Ks relates the motion of mass 3 back to the other motions. So K1, right, connects Q3 and Q1. So in the third row, we would expect Q1 to have a minus K1 term on it. So right here we have K1, K2, and K3 acting on Q3. And here we have K1 connecting Q3 with Q1. Similarly, we have K2 connecting Q3 with Q2, so we have minus K2, and now by following along this uh, pattern of having a mirror image about our diagonals, we can quickly fill in the rest of our elements and put zeros where we don't have anything. That gives us the matrix form 
of our equation of motion. Almost done, right, because we have F1, F2, and F3 down here.